Hello and welcome back. Before Hurricane Ian bombarded the Florida coastline, amateur radio operators were already preparing to help. In fact, amateur operators have been at the forefront of emergency preparedness for years. Our go bags can sustain us for up to 72 hours or more and provide vital communications for emergency operations, rescue crews, and municipal governments. Once licensed, you can serve humanity in ways that you've never even imagined. Are you ready to learn? Well, let's get started. This video is Lesson 5, Part 1 of my Amateur Radio Technician Class License course covering the 2022 to 2026 question pool. I'm Gary Stevens, your instructor. I've been an amateur operator since 2001. In 2014, I earned my Amateur Extra Class License and I've been teaching amateur radio for over 15 years now. My call sign is Kilo Echo 2 Golf Sierra. The T5 section covers electrical principles. On your randomly generated exam, you'll be asked four questions from this sub-element. There are four groups in this section with 52 questions total. In this video, we will cover group T5A. We will discuss current and voltage. More specifically, terminology and units, conductors and insulators, plus alternating and direct current. We need to know that electrical current is measured in the units of amperes. An ampere is sometimes just abbreviated as amp. It is the base unit for electrical current. It was named after the French mathematician and physicist André-Marie Ampere who is considered to be the father of electrodynamics. Note that the formula for current is, current equals voltage divided by resistance, or I equals E divided by R. Current is nothing more than the flow of electrons in a circuit. If water were current, then voltage would be like a tube or the pipe. In this diagram, we can see a light which acts as a resistance. Our test question is, electrical current is measured in which of the following units? A, volts, B, watts, C, ohms, or D, amperes? The correct answer is, of course, D, amperes. We also need to understand that electrical power is measured in watts. Electrical power is expressed in watts. It is named so in the honor of the inventor and mechanical engineer, James Watt. The formula for electrical power is power equals current times voltage, or P equals I times E. Our exam question might look like this. Electrical power is measured in which of the following units? A, volts, B, watts, C, watt hours, or D, amperes. You should have selected B, watts. Again, we need to know that current is the name for the flow of electrons in an electric circuit. Remember that if water were current, then voltage would be like a tube or a pipe that it flows through. Our exam question reads like this. What is the name for the flow of electrons in an electric circuit? A, voltage, B, resistance, C, capacitance, or D, current? The answer is, of course, D, current. You should learn that ohms are the units of electrical resistance. The unit is named after George Simon Ohm, the inventor of Ohm's law. Ohm's law state that current flowing in a circuit is directly proportional to the applied voltage and inversely proportional to the resistance. You don't need to remember that verbatim, just know that an ohm is a unit of resistance. Our test question is, what are the units of electrical resistance? A, Siemens, B, Mohms, C, Ohms, or D, Columns. Did you select C, Ohms? If you did, you're doing great. We need to remember that voltage is the electric term for the force that causes electron flow. A volt is the basic unit of electrical pressure, or EMF. EMF stands for electromotive force. It is named after Alessandro Volta, who invented the voltaic pile, 
which is the forerunner of the current day battery. Your exam might have this question. What is the electrical term for the force that causes electron flow? A, voltage. B, amp hours, ampere hours. C, capacitance. Or D, inductance. The answer is A, voltage, as you probably guessed. We should know that Hertz is the unit of frequency. The unit of frequency is named after Heinrich Rudolf Hertz. He was the first to conclusively prove the existence of electromagnetic waves as predicted by James Clerk Maxwell's equation of electromagnetism. On the exam, you might see this question. What is the unit of frequency? A. Hertz B. Henry C. Farad or D. Tesla we should know that the correct answer is A, Hertz. Understand that metals are generally good conductors of electricity because they have many free electrons. In physics, a free electron is one that is not attached to an atom or a molecule and is free to respond to outside forces. Metal has free electrons, making it the ideal conductor of electricity. Your test may have this question. Why are metals generally good conductors of electricity? A, they have a relatively high density. B, they have many free electrons. C, they have many free protons. Or D, all these choices are correct. The correct answer, of course, is B, they have many free electrons. We should also understand that glass is a good insulator. Here we can see insulators used uh, for amateur radio antennas. Materials with low electron mobility are called insulators. In other words, they have few or no free electrons and do not conduct electricity. This question might be on your exam. Which of the following is a good electrical insulator? A. Copper B. Glass C. Aluminum or D, mercury? The correct answer is B, glass. You might already know this, but just in case you don't, current that alternates between positive and negative direction is, describes alternating current. This slide shows an alternating current wave as it oscillates between the positive and negative. This is called the sine wave. Our exam question might look like this. Which of the following describes alternating current? A, current that alternates between a positive direction and a zero. B, current that alternates between a negative direction and a zero. C, current that alternates between positive and negative directions. Or D, all these answers are correct. You should have known the correct answer is C, current that alternates between positive and negative direction. It would behoove you to know <clears throat> that power is a term that describes the rate at which electrical energy is used. Most everyone is familiar with this power meter. It can be found on the outside of most buildings and houses everywhere. Our test question is this. Which term describes the rate at which electrical energy is used? Resistance, current, power, or voltage? The correct answer is C, power. We should understand that all types of current flow is opposed by resistance. Direct current, alternating current, and RF current or radio frequency current. All these choices are correct. This slide shows one type of resistor that is common in electronics. Many modern ones are even smaller than these. On your exam, you could see this question. What type of current flow is opposed by resistance? A, direct current, B, alternating current, C, RF current, or D, all these choices are correct. The correct answer being D, all these choices are correct. Frequency describes the number of times per second that alternating current makes a complete cycle. In this slide, we can compare 50 Hertz or cycles per second to 60 we can clearly see that 60 is faster or completes more cycles per second. 
The corresponding test question is this. What describes the number of times per second that an alternating current makes a complete cycle? A, pulse rate, B, speed, C, wavelength, D, frequency. The correct answer is D, frequency. This is the end of lesson five, part one. I hope that you've enjoyed this lesson and learned something new in the process. Please like the video and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Today's quote, Heinrich Rudolf Hertz once said, I do not think that the electromagnetic waves that I have discovered will have any practical application. I wonder what he would think if he could see just how many applications electromagnetic waves have today. Until next time, my friends, never stop learning. <laughs>